Hello all, good morning, Trevor Dampier of Trevor Dampier Ministries, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is uh, Wednesday, May 5th, 5521. And uh, what hit my spirit is the Lord said, um, Trevor, you haven't done um, any talk about the number five. And I was like, you know what, let me, let me talk about that since we are in the fifth month, you know, per se, in the Gregorian. Um, so let's, let's talk about that. So the number five symbolizes God's grace, goodness, and favor towards humans. And is mentioned 318 times in the scripture, five is the number of grace. And remember uh, what grace is. Grace is giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy is not giving us what we do deserve. So this is talking about giving us what we don't deserve, which is 25. Uh, <clears throat> five is the number of grace and multiplied by itself, which is 25, is grace upon grace. The Ten Commandments contain two sets of five commandments. The first five commandments are related to our treatment and relationship with God. And the last five concern our relationship with others. Um, and that's really interesting, right? Because when Jesus came, he split his commandments. He said, all the commandments um, abide in these two things. Love the Lord thy God uh, with all thy heart, mind, and soul. And treat everybody like you want to be treated. So that's what the Lord did as well. Let me just read this last uh, part. <clears throat> the book of Psalms is divided into five major sections. Um, section one, uh, Psalm 1 to 41, refers to the Passover. <laughs> Bless God. Uh, Israel's beginning and the start of God's plan of salvation that centers around Christ. Isn't that the moment in time that we are here in May? You know what I mean? So uh, really excited that the Lord told me to go um, read about that, you mean right now. So I wanted to you know, give you guys that little love nugget, you know what I mean, which is uh, uh, a really good wake up piece of coffee, you know what I mean, per se. Okay, let's get to the news of the day. I got a lot of stuff again, man. Hey, Edward Upling um, had another video. I love that he's doing the teaching upon all the prophetic word that he had received from the past and the new prophetic word that he's getting, and he's aligning them together to tell us what the Lord is saying um, in, in his thoughts of mine. And it makes a lot of sense because I'm getting this stuff from other places as well. And here we go again, where he's talking about the beast um, and the image of the beast, you know what I mean, that comes out. Um, and it says that um, the, the uh, beast will give life to the image, and the image will talk, walk around, and all this stuff. Um, and then he talked about this vision that he had had where he was looking through a door, and it was like a skeleton key, and he could look through the door, and he said that he saw this very dark thing. So he couldn't see it, but he could see it had arms, and he saw the, the bones and all that, and he said it looked mechanical, like uh, it was bionic or something, and he said that it had um, uh, it was glowing, you know, the parts that connected uh, to each other. So um, the Lord gave me some revelation on that because what he was saying is basically that Satan is the beast that comes out of the sea. You know what I mean? Believing that, that God is going to release him. You know what I mean? So Satan is the beast that comes out of the sea. And Satan once again trying to mimic God as what God did in the garden with Adam and breathed life into him. That's what the scripture says. It says the beast will breathe life into the image. You know what I mean? So what Satan wants to do is be like God, have his own Jesus Christ per se, but he's going to breathe life into Adam or in the literal sense, like I told you what uh, Jesus had showed me, um, he wants to have a body to walk around in. You know what I mean? Just like God is walking around in the body of Jesus, Satan wants a body. So he literally has had them make a body for himself. So Satan will actually be in form and walking around in a body. You know what I mean? Made. Um, and, and we had a sister in Christ to talk to you about a video about that the other day. Uh, and then he also had some... Um, more prophetic word in reference to the two witnesses. I mean, dude, we are 
at the cusp of this thing, dude. Like, his old stuff was talking about, like, elections and stuff, dude. Now, the prophetic word he's getting all is talking about the bowls of wrath, you know, is talking about the two witnesses, is talking about things that are going to happen, you know, during revelation, I mean, during the tribulation. I'm talking about the rapture. I mean, he's, we are at the cusp of this thing. You know what I mean? It's literally just standing and waiting. And trust me, I know. <laughs> I said every day, I go, Lord, uh, if I don't see an asteroid soon, I'm going to literally go like fly to NASA and make an asteroid come down myself. <laughs> you know, uh, jokingly, because I don't even want to play around like that. Lord will get upset if I'm talking about um, how I want to start the judgment. His timing is perfect. The worst pain that we're going through right now and so and let me not also water that down some are really going through some major things you know me in the body of christ it's important to keep your your focus on him and come out of the world i'm telling you yes we have mockers and scoffers yes we have that annoying stuff like in our homes and family members i mean you know that that you know mock you and scoff you and try to pull you back to the world of course you have all that you know what i mean like don't get me wrong like that's the weariness that we go through. I mean, if we can just go put ourselves like that homeless guy and just put ourselves in a little sewer for a while until the rapture came, you know, that would be nice to do. But we can't. The Lord's like, uh -uh. you know, what I mean, you need to keep doing you. You need to keep, you know, um, um, being the light in the world. And also you need to keep going through the fire or molding you. You know what I mean? So this is part of our molding. This is giving us endurance. This is giving us patience. This is making us into the form of Christ. So your 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 problems and 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 the mocking and scoffing that you're going through, like this is following Christ. So yes, it makes you weary. Yes, you know what I mean? It's annoying. Yes, you know what I mean? You know that you have the power in Christ to strike back. But the power and the timing is not to be released at this time yet. It is the father. It is the head that releases judgment. It is his to avenge, not ours. So we, we, we stand our ground. Yes, we're weary. Yes, it's tiresome. You know what I mean? Um, it's like being one of those deer sitting out there and the wolves are just attacking you and you just watch the deer just move and it's just getting attacked. And you're like, man, this is horrible. <laughs> but hey, man, it, it is what it is, man. We, we stand our ground, but just know that the great gift, you know what I mean, in, in Christ, and you will be able to judge, you know, rightly when you get with him. We're going to be ruling and reigning. We will judge these angels. Remember, we're not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So you will have the chance to judge those, you know what I mean, that um, have persecuted, you know what I mean, the, the, the saints and the humanity. You're going to be judging all these fallen angels, you know what I mean? So um, just stand your ground and wait. Okay, um, I have another video. This was, uh, I believe, Mike444 um, shared this thing. Um, talked about um, the, the, the revelation um, um, uh, word about ugly festering sores broke out on the people who had the mark. Um, dude, you go read this and see this video, the V, <laughs> now what it gives you, dude, um, for some patients, not all, or maybe it'll come out later, because, but it's herpes. People getting the V are getting herpes. <laughs> it's just forming bumps and sores, dude, like all over them, and they diagnosed them and said it's herpes. <laughs> this is unbelievable, dude. And and um, what's interesting about herpes, right, um, is that it doesn't come out right away. It comes out at different times and it randomly just comes out. And once you have it, you have it. Like it, it, it won't go anywhere. So that's uh, uh, really, really interesting. Really interesting. Um, my, my brother uh, from Salt had shared with me uh, another brother in Christ that, that did a full breakdown on uh, Pentecost, you know, like a Pentecost rapture as well as a timeline from there. This thing is advanced, man. I mean, you need to go take a look at this. He did some timeline stuff that is so compelling, dude. Like, you're like, wow, man. This, this really, really looks like, dude, that Pentecost is going to be it. But um, once again, you know, we, we just keep our eyes on everything, right? Remember, like I said, this weekend, 
you, we got a Jesus ascension, you know what I mean? And then, you know, we don't close your eyes. Like you always keep on watch, right? Because um, between now and May 14th, that is uh, the Gregorian date upon Israel's 73rd year. And I told you about the calculations, like these things, it has to start, right? Uh, at Israel 73, because if it doesn't, then that means if um, Jesus comes back after that, then we would, um, Israel be 81, and the scripture wouldn't be right. Unless you want to say that 2020 started tribulation, and you know what I mean, and now Israel 73, and then when Jesus comes back, it'll be before 80. You could say that. Um, I still you know, don't believe, like, the, the seals of Obama, I still don't believe that we're in the seven years. I mean, the, the Antichrist has to start the, the covenant, you know what I mean? That hasn't happened, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, yeah, you see some heavy birth pains, you know what I mean? But um, I'm going to stand strong on that, dude. Like, I don't believe, like, the, the seals have, have been opened, you know what I mean? And um, it, it's just going to, uh, like, the birth pains and all these things, they're getting things up to the point so when the seals are open, it's it's just ready to happen. You know what I mean? Uh, and and we see uh, the restrainer. You know what I mean? The Holy Spirit, God's hand, holding all this stuff back, so that way He can get us out of here, dude. Move His hand up and and all this stuff. Now I'm gonna stand my ground on that. I know many think the seals have been opened and stuff already. I, I just I can't see it based on um, how many deaths and stuff that the Scripture says would happen. I, I just can't see it. Um, so we, we stand, you know what I mean? And, and wait and watch, you know what I mean? And, and that's it. You know, we know that God's holding his hand back else. We'd be seeing all kinds of deaths and stuff. These are warnings, you know what I mean? And, and people need to wake up, get their minds right. Also, you know what I mean? The, the, the Christians, um, goodness, if they are Christians, but the lukewarm and, they, and uh, goodness, I keep finding people on YouTube that used to look at the rapture and they're giving up, man. They're going, you know what? I think we're going to be here uh, for judgment. And you know what I mean? And, and you guys need to read your Bible. I had to delete another um, sister in Christ yesterday. And I actually really liked her too. And then I heard her talking about, um, you know, that uh, uh, we're going to be here for judgment and all that. And I'm like, no, no, what happened? And I go, ah, oh, unsubscribe, dude not interested anymore in this channel. I mean, like, you, you got to be really careful about um, what's happening right now because people are trying to either pull you back into the world, you know what I mean, your family members or friends or, or work, or whatever, they're trying to pull you back in the world that way. Or, you know what I mean, they are people that uh, maybe you respected, you know what I mean, that were, were preaching a word, could even be a pastor, you know what I mean, and that they turn away, you know what I mean, from the blessed hope, you know what I mean? And now they are just saying, you know what, I got a hope in myself. How could you think that about Christ? He is our deliverer. He is our hope. There is no condemnation in Christ. <laughs> that statement, that means there's no judgment in Christ. The seven-year tribulation is not some kind of little fun and games thing. This is judgment on earth for those that have rejected him. Goodness, man. Like, that's just not who he is. It's not who Jesus is. If you've never been delivered in anything in your life through Christ, I, I, don't, I don't know how you know him because he's delivered me out of so many things. And he's always given me a way of an escape. That is why we call him our deliverer. Because he delivers us out of trouble. He's our very present help in time of need. Present help. <laughs> so anyway, I'll stay on that for days, man. But um, it's very sad, man. Stay woke. Stay away from those that are trying to pull you in the gutter because many are trying um, and, and, they, and it gets you weary when you're seeing this and you're like, no, 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 no. You know what I mean? We, we are united. You know what I mean? As brethren, we're united. You know what I mean? In the faith and we're united in the blessed hope. 
that our Lord, here we go again, our Lord and Savior. What in the world is he saving us from if he doesn't save us from judgment and hell? Who is he then? He's nothing. If, if that if if we got to go through the same thing as heathens got to go through, if we got to get judged, if we got to go to uh, hell and and then figure out a way to get ourselves out, he ain't he ain't a savior. You know what I mean? That's what he's saving us from. Anyway, let me keep going. All right. Um. So we had seventy two tornadoes hit the ground in the central U S. and southeast in the past forty eight hours. That was yesterday. We haven't even looked in the news to see what was happening today. I told you these severe storms and tornadoes and stuff were coming. And the crazy part is we have more today, but they're already talking about it. I didn't share the video uh, yesterday, or maybe I did, but we got more coming next week. More coming next week. Dude, Texas and Louisiana, they can't get a break, dude. Like they've been pounded season upon season upon season. I mean, I don't know what they're doing over there now. Louisiana, we kind of know, right? We know there's heavy witchcraft in, in Louisiana, sinful uh, sexual acts. They're doing all kinds of nasty stuff over there, especially demonic witchcraft, warlock type stuff. We know that. Uh, Texas, I don't know. I mean, I thought Texas were just good old country folk, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, I thought that was kind of like a Bible belt, but obviously the Lord is pissed off over there. There's been so many warnings over there. Um, I don't know what they're doing, but maybe y'all know, but I don't know. Anyway, y'all, y'all need to repent over there for real. Um, another, another one. I know this is getting repetitive, dude. Like, trust me, the Lord loves people so much, dude. Just like I said yesterday, he keeps warning and warning and warning and warning. The same things because he really doesn't want anyone to perish. But there's another solar flare. Another one. <laughs> and uh, like I said, every other day there is another solar flare. Um, expect more earthquakes, more large volcanic activity, probably within, well, that was yesterday. So maybe today and tomorrow you, you, you'll see some sixes or something coming. <laughs> I know I'll be posting it. You will see. Uh, oh, over in Oman, this is uh, near, it's in the United Arab Emirates, yeah, yeah, in the United Arab Emirates area, um, hurricane and tornado causes mass flooding and destruction in Oman. Dude, the flooding, it literally looks like this, this country's underwater. Literally, cars are floating away. But like, it's, it's just bad. I mean, serious birth pain warnings in those areas. And then um, my sister in Christ, um, from Twitter that uh, followed and shared uh, this with me. And this is uh, uh, China doing a strategic move where they have deployed aircraft carriers um, right there uh, at the entrance of the Suez Canal, you know, to where the, the Red Sea, you know, goes through. Um, um, they, they have it right there at the uh, 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 port area, you know, um, um, near in Africa. And they've also started building military operations in Africa. And keep in mind, Russia also has military operations going on in Africa. You know, as well, this puts them in a strategic position to be able to control the ports. And they have the digital currency rolling out. And this puts them in a good location to be able to strike India, send missiles you know, over to Israel if necessary, and have the ability to strike missiles at the major oil refineries all in that area as well. So China, once again, is trying to be the world dominant country. And you know how authoritarian they are. You know what I mean? It shows you um, how easy the mark of the beast system is going to be able to be rolled out. Um, especially if China has anything to do with ruling uh, the world uh, during this time, they can push that very easily, especially once the United States is gone. And that's the agenda. Get the U.S. out so that way all of these evil countries can do their will. You know what I mean here? 
Gog, Magog War is going to kick up. You know what I mean? All this stuff is, is going to going to roll. But remember, God's in control of all of it. He's the one releasing beasts. He's the one saying, you know, go get that beast out of the sea. You know what I mean? Whatever the beast's name is and release them. And you know what I mean? It's going to be Godzilla walking around in here. He's the one that is opening up the spirit realm where the demonic uh, uh, realm can be seen. He's doing all these things. So remember who is in control here. You know, people think like, you know, the, uh, Satan just all of a sudden just became God and he's making all these things happen. Nah, -uh. God is using Satan, the Antichrist, all these entities to do his will for judgment. And then he's going to strike them. <laughs> God, man, do you understand? I, I hope you guys need to digest that. I mean, the Lord, Satan knows that he has to go to hell. He knows he can't fight God. He knows he's going to lose. He knows all these things, right? But he still does the will because, well, he doesn't want to get struck down early. <laughs> he's like, okay, I don't want to get struck down now. Like, if you let me buy some time and 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 go out here, I'll I'll I'll, I'll beat him up for you. I'll I'll go do some nasty stuff to him. You know what I mean? Just just don't throw me in yet at this time and maybe the lord made an agreement saying hey if you go do this stuff for me you know what i mean when you um when i throw you in the hell i'll let you out you know after a thousand years you know what i mean and he lets him out you know what i mean because he has to get out somehow the lord knew it was going to happen so i mean i'm sure that they have some kind of agreement you know i heard this from my uh sister in christ the other day that just like uh god has spoke to, to satan about job you know what i mean that was an agreement you know what I mean, right? And he said, yeah, you can go do this and you can do this to him, you can torment, but you can't kill him. You know what I mean? And then the Lord even says uh, during that five months, you know what I mean, where, um, you know, Satan and the, his armies get to torment people for five months. He said, yeah, you can torture him and torment him, but you can't kill him. You know what I mean? So there, there are rules in this. You know what I mean? So we, we don't have all the uh, um, unwritten statements and stuff that, that God did. We don't need them all. You know what I mean? It's not important. Maybe that's why the Lord didn't give to us. But, you know, he has given us revelation on some of this. And he just gave me some of that now, you know, in reference to, to him and Job and, and the agreement that he had with Satan then. So very well could be, you know, that he has an agreement with him at, at this uh, time as well. Well, let's get into the, the verse of the day. This is Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing, hallelujah, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. All right. This one speaks for itself, but um, really, really important statement to stand on. Be anxious for for nothing. I find that um, the anxiety to have something, you know what I mean, is, is what causes us to, to get weary and what causes us to get frustrated. You know, when it's with our spouses, you know what I mean, we are anxious for something from them. You know what I mean? And then that's what, you know, um, starts to agitate us. You know what I mean? When we're sitting around thinking about, you know what I mean, the rapture, you know what I mean? We're sitting here weird because we're anxious to get out of this world. Now I told the Lord, I said, you know, hey Lord, how am I supposed to not be anxious about you coming to get me? That's hard. How, how am I supposed to do that? But um, but because of the uh, of of anxious being anxious, that's what you know will cause the weariness. You know what I mean? So um, being anxious over a thing, you know what I mean, is is probably the biggest cause of any frustration that you have. So step back sometimes, and I do it all throughout the day, you know what I mean, anytime I'm, I'm sitting around and I'm, I'm starting to want something, I go, okay, don't be anxious over this, don't be anxious over it, meaning don't crave for it, don't, don't demand it in your head, like try to, try to operate in a motion of just, okay, I'm here, I'm, I'm present, be present, and not thinking about, um, something that is going to sustain you in a way or fulfill you, you know what I mean? So that way you can stand your ground and not get weary or emotional about a thing. You know what I mean? Just just let everything be what it is. You know what I mean? And just operate in calmness, 
and peace and give it over to God for these things that you are being anxious for so that way he can give you peace and an answer to it. And you leave it to him. We're just pinkies. You know what I mean? The pinky, you know what I mean? Shouldn't need too much except uh, an order from the father, from the head. You know what I mean? So if you have a need, give it back to the head. The head will take care of its body. You know what I mean? More than enough riches in Christ Jesus. You know what I mean? He will supply all your needs. Hallelujah. Okay, people, have a good one. Love y'all. Shalom. Jesus Christ surely loves you dearly. Have a good one. Later.